ever since I pulled Debra a couple weeks ago, I've been doing 21 second R5. But then I wonder, can I do that without Debra? And today, I'm so happy because I finally did it. We are using the Fire Debra and we are still achieving the 21 second run. But it's not always 21 second. Sometimes it goes up to 23 second. But because we're using a sort of replacement team, it's not as good. But I think 21 second or 23 second are still really, really good. And I believe my team is somewhere near the minimum requirement for all this. So I'm gonna show you guys everything in here, the rune build and the strategy behind the 21 second R5 runtime. First team is gonna be the belly girl team and that is also the hardest team to build because Comtor just made it harder by buffing Theomas, giving it 30% attack bar when the Endurers pop. Thank you Comtors, nobody asked for that anyway. So you have to get into a specific speed tuning to make sure that when he gained the attack bar, your team will still move accordingly. And big shout out to Seishizo for figuring out what speed you need to build. I will leave it on the screen somewhere. First, we have a Theo Mask on 5 Wheel. The wheel is to protect the passive from getting oblivion. And you don't need any stat on this unit. It is there to lose HP and provide the leader skill. That's about it. When Theo Mask HP drop, the Colleen will heal all the time providing the attack buff. Next up, we have the budget Debra Miriam on 5 Wheel. This unit has to survive both the first attack and the jump. So you need some sort of stat on it, HP, defense, and fight rune, and that's all you need. She will never need to move at all. She's only here for the passive that make your attack power better. The first one to move is going to be Colleen on fight, speed, whatever, whatever. She's only here to provide the attack buff in the first turn. After that, she can die, no problem whatsoever. She just needs to survive the first AoE attack from the boss, and that's about it. Providing the attack buff after that and the healing, and she can die. You don't have to care too much about that. Next up will be Brandia with attack, quick damage, and attack. She can be on Rage or Fado as well. But my Billy Girl was lacking damage, so I had to put Fight Rune on her. So it's gonna be a bit harder to bear if you follow this, or you don't have enough damage on Billy Girl. We have crit damage as more HP on the artifact and skill 3 crit damage. She will only have to attack once with the skill 3, and that's about it. Remember, the speed tuning is very important because if you are slower, then the Theomas will get a turn when he gained the attack bar. Very annoying. I wish they buffed Theomas so that they give him like vampire effect or counter attack or whatever, and not the attack bar thing that he's getting here. And lastly, it will be Bailiger on Rage Will attack, crit damage, and attack. And we have crit damage as less enemy HP and skill 3 crit damage in the artifact. I think I can improve this rune further because this is like a green rune <laughs> with one roll into crit damage, which is kind of bad. But I think this is somewhere near the minimum Belliga requirement when I try to team with Debra so that you can always end the run with the branding on the boss after the jump. So the game plan is turn one, the boss will attack all three team. He will suffer some debuff. Turn two, defense break happen from the Prilia and the team up on Doggos. Turn three, we have branding happening and then branding will attack at the same time. The boss jump and after that, the boss will go down, suffer defense break from the team up of Ikaru and the branding from Shiwa. And at the same time, the belly girl will attack as well. But how do we get the defense break branding and debuff? First, let's start with the middle team. We have the debuff monster, Nico. So when the boss attack him, he will provide slow debuff on the boss. We have the buff block monster, Ikmanodon, provide the buff block when the boss attack him. So these units will not move whatsoever. They are there to survive and provide the debuff. At the same time, this guy will die providing the heal block on the team. We are trying to get as many debuff as possible so that the AI of Ken will be perfect. With all the debuff and defense break on the boss, Ken will trigger the skill 3 all the time and provide branding on the boss. The branding from the skill is a 100% activation rate triple hit, so the chance to land the branding is extremely high and will most likely have the branding. Also, Ken is on a very special build. We have attack, good damage, and attack here. No slot 5 because that will make him too tanky. So what you want Ken to do is to provide the branding and then he needs to die when the boss jump and attack your entire team. You don't want Ken to survive because because of the skill, he will always gain a turn and then perform another attack after the boss go down, which is what you don't want to happen. You want your Shiwa to move to provide branding and not Ken going for another spin. That's why he's not having the slot 5 and most of the other rune have no HP or defense in there. By figure, if he has zero HP and defense, he will die to the boss attack on the front line only. 
So I need to up his defense and HP just a little bit so that even if he get attacked by the front like attack, then he will still survive and do the attack for you. But before Ken take a turn, Prilia will move to provide a defense break for the team. So very standard, double fight will. I think the ultimate build for all these units should be attack with damage attack. But if you don't have it like I do, then you don't have to go attack with damage attack. It's totally fine. Just have some stat in there and she provide a defense break. That's about it. At the same time during phase one, the boss will also attack the gargoyle who will turn into the stone in the first turn, provide the attack debuff. And we have the Raok that can provide team up. Raok will team up with either the defense breaker that is going to be Helia or the branding that's going to be Chami and also provide the heal block as well. So after the boss gets slapped by Brandia on the face, now the boss will get attacked by Shihua. Both skill can provide branding with their respective chance. Shihua will never use skill 2 which is amazing. So Shihua will always do her skill 1 or skill 3 which can both provide branding. Not only that, the one to move after the jump will be Ikaru. So Ikaru will team up with the other 3 units in the back line. So we have branding, we have defense break and we also have another defense break. And if we land both the branding and the defense break, then Bailey Girl will finish the boss no problem. If we miss the branding, which might happen because there are no 100% branding skill 1 unit beside LD5 monster like Jara or Rahu or the Dark Vampire, then we have Crow as a plan B to finish off the boss. And because these unit will survive even the jump, the boss will be debuffed after the jump as well. And that will allow Crow to always use skill 3 and Crow will finish off the boss. I've also tried the approach whereby you use Tark to team up after the boss jump and the unit in the front line are level 1 so that they die instantly. But then there's a problem. If I miss the branding after the boss jump, Belega would not finish off the boss because we're using Miriam and not Deborah. So our damage output from the Belega team will be much less. And Shihua alone is not good enough to finish off the boss compared to Crow. With 3 debuff, Crow can easily do a lot of damage. Most of the time, you will land the branding. But then the time that you don't, then it's going to be a little bit tricky. So I figure having a Crow as a backup plan is just as good as having a Tark in there because the chance of blending the branding with Tark is pretty much the same compared to not using Tark because Tark is teaming up with Shihua for the skill 1 but Shihua will either use skill 1 or skill 3 on her own anyway so the team up is kind of not too important and because on the left side I'm already using the Helia and Ikaru will always team up with her so the defense break chance is already really amazing on the left side with the Raok and the Helia. So I kind of don't need the Tark team up with the Prelia anymore. So I have Crow in there as a backup unit because I've been running so many runs and I can see sometimes you just don't land the branding. Unless I put in my LD5 which will make things so much easier. There are also some changes I can make to the team if I want to. So I try using this guy because he's a fire unit so his damage output is going to be better thanks to the leader skill. And this skill actually attacked 4 times in total with a very similar branding chance compared to the 9 tail Fox. But because he attacked 4 times in total, I don't know what happened in between the attack animation. It ruined the other team turn order. It's kind of weird, I don't know why. But using him was not really consistent. Another amazing unit will be Jara with the same build as the Helia. But then Jara is now a very incredible PvP unit. So I don't plan to use Jara in my R5 at all. Can I have a dupe? No, 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 no. Just kidding. I don't want that. <laughs> the only obvious improvement I can do is to put in the yellow Ninetale Fox. Let's pretend that is yellow because I have fed all of that for LD pieces and I'm too lazy to fuse, I think, 10 copy of her to put her in there. That's why I've been using Helia. So that is my current solo R5 team. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are building this team or if you need any help building the team or you have any other question. We'd love to answer that. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.